what I forgot to mention in my last video was that my friend Q actually gave me this for Christmas. And she knitted it. I'm really happy. I, I, I chose a few books to talk about. Half of them, it's just stupid. Because, say, this one. Uh, I hardly remember what it's about. And I don't know, it's just Swedish, I think, or something. So way stupid. Even don't believe. Uh, in waiting of life, basically, or something like it. And, uh, well, they're good books, but I just don't remember too much. And all I know is I remember that I liked them, but that's still just stupid. I don't know what to say about them. And let's move on with these books. They're silly. Well, if you're a fan of Joss Whedon, which you should be, because Joss Whedon is God, then Joss Whedon, the genius behind Buffy, creator of Buffy, Angel, Frey, and Firefly, screenwriter for Toy Story, Speed, and Alien Resurrection. And it has a few quotes on the back here, and one that I like the best is... Joss on keeping plot development secret, uh, even from his cast. In this scene, you're gay and action. I love, love, love that one. Joss Whedon is great. Oh, there's a, a, a quote here somewhere inside from Marty Naxon that uh, has been working on Buffy and when she got the job as, you know, a writer among other things and stuff. She, she says, I called my mom to tell her that I got this job and I was shaking with excitement. I called her from a payphone and there was this long pause as she said, Oh honey, next year you'll do better. <laughs> and she was so excited her mom was like, Oh honey. And then I have, What Would Buffy Do? The Vampire Slayer as Spiritual Guide, which is totally retarded and I haven't read all of it yet. but. It's kind of fun, and it has a few good points, and, you know, it's just silly. And if you like Buffy, Buffy, and especially if you like Joss Whedon, you should check out this book, because it has all about Joss Whedon, uh, about him in general, his life, his work, and if you're not too fond of, you know, Joss Whedon as a person, <laughs> you like his, his work and stuff, it obviously has a few things about... Mm, about his series and stuff. Then we actually do have one of my absolute favorites. It is Hesten så tappade sina glasögon. This is a children's book. My mother used to read it to me when I was a kid. And I read it a few years ago again. And I gotta say that I seriously love this book. It is the most coziest book ever. And I'm sorry, but I don't think that you can read it because I don't think it is translated. It means the horse that dropped his glasses. And it is very cozy. It has this, you know, friendship, blah, blah, you know, thing. And it is wonderful. I can read you the back to you. Uh, I'm not too good with translating directly without thinking, so this is going to be a mess. But Please do understand, you know, the big picture. The horse dropped his glasses. It could no longer read. The horse thought carefully on what it could do now, well, basically, and then <clears throat> wrote down the possibilities. One, I am a horse, and I've dropped my glasses. What do I do now? Two, of course I'll get new ones. Three, but I don't have enough money to get new glasses. Four. And I get money by reading horse books. Five, which I now can't read without glasses. Six, I can sell myself to a sausage factory, but then I can use the money I get for it. Seven, I can go to a pony camp for girls. Eight, I will go out in the world and to seek my happiness. The horse chose um, possibility number eight. But had it not meant, had it had it not met the helpful mouse, 
They gave it a map and a compass. The extraordinary hedgehog that bravely fought its fear. The wise and elegant crow. The artful dog. Artful. Artistic anyone? The artistic dog. Not to mention the cows Rosa and Rugosa. Had the not so thoughtful horse had trouble managing. But now it had both friends, food, and roof over its head during the long cold winter. And all of these animals they 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 help each other during the long winter. And they live in this barn and it's amazing and it has this really cute pictures. This is like the crow flying. Here is the horse finding some sort of food thing in a box or something. Here's the horse too. He looks very cute. Hanumekala or something, I don't know. And the inside here seems to imply that it's Finnish and then it's been translated to Swedish. And then I you know, really don't know if it exists in any other languages. So I love that book and I wish that you could read it. If you ever find a book that says the horse that dropped his glasses, read it. By by Hannu Mekkele. Some Finnish dude. Then we have another. It's the winner of Children's Book Award. Uh, it's you know a bit for a bit older children though. And it is The Boy in the Bubble. And this one's actually English. I could read this one too. And now I don't have to translate. <laughs> How was I supposed to know it was going to be the kind of day when you could get hit by a shooting star or find an extra strip of gum in the back. That is how Anne remembers the day she first met Adam, the boy born with no immune system. But what hope is there for a, for a relationship with a boy whose entire life has been protected from the outside world by a plastic tent, who has never been kissed by his mother, much less kissed by a girl? Anne knows that she can never be satisfied with being merely Adam's life taster, but then comes the opportunity of an operation which could change all that. And they're about sixteen, and she he moves in the neighbor uh, into the neighborhood, and in starts in her class and stuff. Uh, so the class goes over to his home sometimes, and has a lessons class thing there. And she decides to make a school project about his condition. So she goes over there a lot and he's in this plastic tent like thing. You see they're holding hands and you know, they can't really be together but and it's just, you know, young love, they're about sixteen and it's amazing with such feeling and I love it. But then we have my absolute baby. These you th this used to be my absolute friggin' baby, but now this is Lady Hawk. She's so pretty, and there there is um, Rutger Hauer with a hawk. Now a spellbinding fantasy film, based on a 13th century legend of love and witchcraft. And I can read you this one. No one escapes the dungeons of Hakula, but Philippe Gaston did. Young thief, the, the young thief, they called the mouse, escaped through the cracks where the rats couldn't run. Running for his life, and pursued by the bishop's guards, he was saved by the sword arm of the dark rider on the great black horse. Who was this fierce warrior, silhouetted against the darkening skyline, with a strange and beautiful hunting hawk on his fist? And why? Did he so fear the black fall of night? Together they must journey towards a day of destiny, a day without light and a night without darkness, when the Bishop of Aquila must face the lovers he has cursed and the evil one can claim his own. You should definitely watch this movie. This is the book. This pickpocket thief does this cliché thing and escapes from this prison no one has ever escaped before. And he meets this mysterious man, played by Rutger Hauer in the movie, and it is very wonderful. 
and I shouldn't spoil you too much because I'm demanding that you watch the movie. I made all my friends watch it. So you better, better watch it. And now we have, since I figured you've seen the English one so many times, I thought I'd show you the Swedish one. Harry Potter. This is the fifth Harry Potter book. There is Harry and the scary ass thing. And I was really skeptical towards Harry Potter in the beginning, but read it. It's not, you know, like I thought many, many years ago that it was children's books. They are great. So read them. And I think that was all for me. Wow. Go watch Lady Hawk. I swear, you gotta watch it. Or else I'll be mad. <laughs> anyway, bye.